Now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who is here tonight for the meeting. Uh, also, I want to welcome those that are viewing the meeting on G10 television. Uh, to begin with tonight, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'm going to ask uh, a young Boy Scout that's with us tonight, Mr. Eamon Covey, and his, I guess, his scout leader, uh, representing Troop number 496 uh, he's here working on his communications badge and if he'll lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance if everybody would please rise I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all We'll have our invocation. Our Heavenly Father, we, as always, we give thanks to you. We give thanks to you for this day and for the blessings you so graciously bestow upon us individually and upon our city of Jacksonville. We give thanks for all of our employees who serve every day, our citizens and our city. But not tonight, we especially give thanks for those who will be recognized for using their life-saving skills in order to save one of our citizens' lives. We also give thanks that we have had so far an uneventful storm season, and we pray that through your continued providence and guidance that we will not have any kind of storms or hurricanes as the season progresses. We also pray for all those who are serving us in the military here and around the world, for their families and for their safety. We pray for our mayor and our council that your guidance and direction would always be with them. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Council, you have before you a copy of tonight's a, a proposed agenda for the meeting. And there's also two uh, items to be added, one being a proclamation for Fire Prevention Week as item F and a new item number 10 which will be the designating of a voting alternate uh, voting delegates for the 2014 north carolina league of municipalities annual business meeting move to adopt the agenda as amended with the additions second we have a motion and a second are there any further discussion hearing none all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. all opposed Next, we have the approval of minutes, and this will be the uh, September 2nd, 2014 special workshop meeting, and also the September 2nd, 2014 regular meeting. Move approval of minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? We have several presentations to make tonight, and I'm going to come around front. I have some presentation. Of uh, life saving awards to present tonight. And it, I would like to ask uh, Chief Unero, uh, Mike Unero, and Deputy Chief uh, Spencer Lee if they'll join me up front here, please. Next, I'd like to ask uh, Captain Jimmy Davis from the Fire Department. Driver 2, Christopher Blackman. Driver 1, Kenneth Netzik, Netznik. Driver 1, William Stanley. Telecommunicator, Julie Robson. Chief, uh, and ask them to come up here and join me too, please. If you all stand over here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> On July 14, 2014, the Jacksonville Fire and emergency service personnel from fire station four were dispatched on a difficulty breathing call 
While en route, they were notified by dispatcher Julie Robson that the person had collapsed. Upon arrival, they found the person unresponsive, not breathing, with no pulse. Captain Davis realized the person was in cardiac arrest and initiated chest compressions. Drivers Blackman and Netsnick prepared and applied the AED, which is the automated external defibrillator. Driver Stanley supplied oxygen through a bag valve mask. All four worked on the victim until Oslo County paramedics arrived. The medical staff at Vidant Medical Center remarked to the victim's family that it was the actions taken by the Jacksonville's first responders that saved the victim's life. Our victim, and he's here with us tonight, living proof. Good to be alive, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is. Thank you. Can I say one thing, sir? Yes, sir. Please come on up. I, I want to say you people are my heroes. I, pre, I, I, I will always be indebted to you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Very well said, sir. Jimmy? Chris. Let's give them a hand. These are Feel free to come right on up and take your pictures. Okay, we have 15 minutes left for pictures. Anybody? <laughs> a moment to recognize some members of also county ems service that are here tonight they've come come to be with us that were vital to this whole uh success in this operation guys stand up for me thank you, thank you. mr dale you're very fortunate you know, the citizens of this community are very fortunate that we have folks just like this. There's more than that. There's a lot of them sitting out here in the audience. The audience is back here. They work, they're out there 24-7. They're there, you know, in the event something should happen like that. Any time that we can avert a tragedy, the loss of a loved one, or, or you know, it means it's, it's worth every, every minute of time, training, every dollar that's spent towards public safety. Anyway, and, you know, if that's for anybody out there. It, it was Mr. Dale this time. It could be somebody else the next. It could be your family member. <clears throat> Mr. 
Next, I'd like to ask council liaison to the uh, 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 Beautification and Appearance Commission, Advisory Committee, excuse me, it's taken me a while to get used to that. Uh, council member Angela Washington, join me up front, please. And I'll let you hold that there. Um, Mrs. Frances Paget, she has been unable to be with us, but I do want to remark on the fact that her uh, residence was chosen uh, for the Outstanding Residential Appearance Award for, for uh, this past month. Uh, her residence is at 410 Carmen Avenue, and it was nominated by a consensus of, rec of the Recognition Committee and others. It says nominators expressed that the home has evolved into a neighborhood enhancement through both improvements to the exterior of the home and the landscaping. As you see, there's photographs of the before and afters up here. The property now features a variety of greenery and flowers and just has, has risen back up again in this neighborhood. And uh, as you can tell by the pictures, uh, it was in pretty sad shape there. A beautiful home that for one reason or another that was allowed to uh, go downhill, but now you can see, hey, it looks just like it did 40, 50 years ago when it was built. So I want to thank Ms. Paget for her effort in beautifying, helping to beautify our community. Thank you, Ms. Paget. The North Carolina Wildlife Federation recognized the city of Jacksonville as the Municipal Con Conservationist of the Year. The award was pre uh, presented at the annual Governor's Awards Banquet on September 6, 2014 in Cary. Now we have a little video that we're going to watch uh, of the presentation. The awards banquet is a 50 year plus tradition of the North Carolina Wildlife Federation and we do it to honor conservation heroes across the state. It's an opportunity for us to recognize ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And we are uh, almost 70 years old now and we have we've done a lot of good things for wildlife in, this, in the state of North Carolina. And what you see here and some of the, the animals and some of the archives that we have posted, some of the old pictures, just gives you an opportunity to kind of revisit where we've come from, our history and our roots. Jacksonville has done a lot for wildlife in their area. They have, they have shown that they've got a commitment to the wildlife, to the wild places there, um, and, and their environmental stewardship was worthy of our, rec our recognition. The Municipal Conservationist of the Year, the City of Jacksonville. In the late 1990s, the City of Jacksonville kicked off its Wilson Bay Initiative, a program to restore water in, new, in the New Rivers Wilson Bay that for decades had been sullied by the city's wastewater treatment plant. Now, as part of that effort, the old wastewater treatment plant was reimagined and re-engineered into new life as Sturgeon City, an environmental education center that not only makes amends for the past, but points the way to a future in which environmental restoration can be compatible with economic development. Under the longtime leadership of Assistant City Manager Glenn Hargett, Sturgeon City has become a centerpiece of Jacksonville municipal life. The center hosts field trips, public events, and even a street science outreach that turns teacher work days into environmental education fun days. Week-long Sturgeon City Institute events offer summer camps and environmental stewardship. Last year, more than 10,000 children took part in educational events through Sturgeon City. But we'd also like to add our thank you to Jacksonville, to Glenn Hargett, and to Sturgeon City for a steadfast dedication to cleaning up the abuses of the past and committing to a sustainable future in which residents are committed to green living. The City of Jacksonville is the 2013 Municipal Conservationist of the Year. It's with great honor that we present this to the city. It is the work of the city council, the empowerment that the city council did, the vision that they had for what the river could become. 
think, if you would, about the predecessor to Richard Woodruff here. When Jerry Bittner was city manager, a, what he called a crazy professor, Dr. Jay Levine, came with Dr. Walter Tim, who was the economic development director for, the, for the Onslow County, and said they had an idea about how they could clean up the river. Now, the reason why this was so important, as you will recall, the river had become horribly degraded. So much so that when there was a large hogway spill in 1995, the predictions of gloom and doom that were to come from the 25 million gallons that spilled out into the river didn't manifest all of the fish kills and things that it was supposed to bring because the river was so dead. But through the use of implanted oysters, through the restoration of wetlands, through aeration, and through stormwater mitigation, Wilson Bay was restored to health. And even more so, there was this continued legacy that occurred of working with others, with Onslow County, with Camp Lejeune, with all those who have a partnership with the river to help sustain it and in keeping it their way. Every Thursday, on the third Thursday of the month, still a New River Roundtable meets to talk about the river and talk about it. You have caused that to happen, City Council and Mayor Phillips. It is your work and your efforts to do it because we merely act out your desires on that. So it's with great honor that we present this award to you, and we hope that it will be accepted in the manner in which it's given because it is the work of the council, it is the work of this people and of our citizens in trying to advance the river and make something happen. I want to give credit where credit's due. Uh, without the tireless, indelible spirit of Glenn Hargett to keep this constantly moving, as long as I've known Glenn in government, I mean, uh, we would have never been able to do, accomplish near what we have been able to accomplish with bringing the river back to life. And again, like I said, it's that spirit that you have, Glenn, that sense of community that you have. Not only are you an employee and staff member of the city, but you are a true citizen of Jacksonville. And it's, it's obvious in your action and deeds. And I thank you very much for your dedication. For, you, for those of you that ha didn't grow up in this community like Glenn and I do, I can remember going down to Wilson Bay Park and wading out in the water fishing and my mother telling me to get out of there before I got the typhoid or, or something. Uh, but, you know, that was back when uh, sewage was being pumped in the river both at Camp Lejeune and uh, from other places too, we won't mention. But, uh, you know, the thing about it is that we have a beautiful river out there now. It's a wonderful resource, regional resource. Uh, for recreational, uh, commercial, all kind, of, all kind of purposes. And that river has a heartbeat now. And it's, again, it's thanks to efforts from people like Glenn. Thank you. Okay. For this next uh, proclamation, uh, this is for Minority Enterprise Development Day. And I see that uh, our chairperson was unable to be with us tonight, but I would like to ask Millionaire Williams from the uh, uh, chamber to come up and join me. And I'd like to ask the rest of the committee from the chamber that's here to please come and stand. Very, very good. Thank you. I didn't. And I will shoot you. She did get here from the lake. So. Oh, she's in the pink. Okay. Oh, she is here. Adrian, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you sitting right here. Hey, sir. How you doing? In recognition of outstanding contributions that the minority businesses make to our economy, the Jacksonville Chamber of Commerce has requested a presentation of a proclamation in recognition of Minority Enterprise Day. So at this time, I'll read the proclamation. Whereas the Jacksonville also Chamber of Commerce, in collaboration with Coastal Carolina Community College's Small Business Center, have worked to facilitate the growth of local small and minority owned businesses. And whereas Minority Enterprise Development Week 2014 will be observed the week of September 29th through October 3rd, 2014 by the Jacksonville Oslo Chamber of Commerce and Coastal Carolina Community College's Small Business Center to acknowledge outstanding contributions and whereas small 
and minority-owned businesses embody the timeless American values of hard work, integrity, and optimism, and contribute to the economic stability of the country. And whereas Minority Enterprise Development Week's theme is connecting business with opportunity. It offers an opportunity to increase awareness of programs and services obtainable through federal, state, and local governments, as well as to network with small businesses. And whereas the Jacksonville Onslow Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber's Minority Business Services Committee will honor a Minority Business Entrepreneur of the Year and the Linda L. Richardson Minority Business Advocate of the Year. Now, therefore, I, Sammy Phillips, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim the week of September 29th through October 3rd, 2014, as Minority Deve Enterprise Development Week in the city of Jacksonville, and encourage all our citizens to join with me in honoring the Im important role small and minority-owned businesses have in our society. Furthermore, I commend the men and women whose ingenuity, integrity, and innovative spirit com contribute to the free enterprise system on which the American economy was founded. And I will present this now to you, ma'am. Thank you. And I'm sure you would like to say one up. <laughs> well, I just say thank you uh, to the city council for the recognition and the proclamation. We are so excited that we're, we are extending this year from just midday to midweek. This is something new for us and we are so excited. And we all work very hard as a group to be able to do what needs to be done within this community. And it is a great honor just to be a part of what's being done in the city of Jacksonville and in Onslow County as a whole. And so we just say thank you to the city council. Thank you, Mayor thank Phillips, you. for always supporting us and allowing us to do what we're doing in the city and the county. Thank you. And I'm going to just add to what Adrian just spoke of. What I also want this community to know that Onzo County at a state level took away another award. This is the second year it's been called North Carolina Annual Statewide Minority Enterprise Development Week. And our very own homegrown mayor, Jackie Barton of Honey Bake Ham, received a statewide award recognizing her as a minority entrepreneur for her accomplishments and achievements here in our community. And we know that she's uh, starting a, another franchise there on the base at Camp Lejeune with Honey Bake Ham. So we're very proud of her efforts. And what you have to know is the employment that the minority businesses bring to the community. The numbers are there and they're growing and we're doing a lot at the Chamber of Commerce to assist minority business owners to gain contracts through DOT. We have someone coming down meeting with the group. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes and I'll just take two seconds, Mayor. And that is the awards luncheon, which two honorees will be. And that is Dr. Gina Francis, who is the only minority um, African-American female veterinarian here in the community. There was a large article done on her in the Daily News. Please take a look at it yesterday. A great article, front page. And uh, she will be receiving the award, the Minority Entrepreneur of the Year. And secondly, Junie Christian, who's the Executive Director for the Onslow Women's Center. He will be receiving the Linda L. Richardson Minority Business Advocate of the Year. So we're very proud of the efforts of our people here in our community. We're honored that we receive such recognition and support from this community that we so proudly all live in and so love the heritage of Onslow County. God bless you. Please come out. Give us a call at the Chamber of Commerce. We have the awards luncheon Monday, September 9th, the conference at the Chamber, 
how logistics play a vital role in your business. And last but not least, we end up with our business expo at the Commons Recreation Center. And I will also say this, there are vendor booth space available, and we partner with the city of Jacksonville with this event as well. So thank you very much. The next uh, uh, presentation tonight, I have a proclamation for Jacksonville, North Carolina Fashion Week. And I have present with me tonight, uh, with us tonight, Pastors Lisa Clyborne and Mike Clyborne from New River Ministries and Latoya Scott from Final Touches Models Management. And if you'll come forward to accept this proclamation, I'd appreciate it. Mayor, I think we also have a lot of the fashion folks. Oh, here. absolutely. Come on up. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah. That does not include Spencer, and it doesn't include me in fashion. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Thank you. The Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority provides funding for marketing through their Tourism Promotion Fund to attract people from outside of Jacksonville to come to our area uh, and stay in our hotels, eat in our restaurants, and shop. In other words, beefing up our local economy. One of the events that they have funded uh, is the marketing for is the Jack first Jacksonville, North Carolina Fashion Week to be held here in Jacksonville. It's a three-night celebration uh, beginning on Thursday, September 25th, uh, and will feature runway shows, the emerging designer and model competition, and a special married to the military fashion show. And I'm very pleased uh, to be able to present uh, this proclamation to the co-founders of this event, uh, Pastors Lisa and Mike Clyburn of New River Ministries and Latoya Scott of Final Touch Models Management. <clears throat> Whereas Eastern North Carolina has the largest demographic of young people ranging from 22 to 30 years old, this age group takes part in the change in fashion trends and are the reason for the motto, fashion is not what you wear, it's a lifestyle. And whereas pastors Mike and Lisa Parker Clyborne of the New River Ministries and Latoya Scott, the Final Touch Models Management have brought a fashionable event to Jacksonville. And whereas because New York City has the largest fashion week in the U.S., the theme for Jacksonville's event is, quote, a bite of the Big Apple, unquote. This event will showcase emerging designer and model, uh, model talent truly becoming a pathway to New York. And whereas the three-night celebration taking place at the Jacksonville Commons Recreation Center will uh, feature more than 10 runway shows, the emerging designer and model competition, and a special married to the military fashion show. And whereas charitable partners for the event include the American Cancer Society and Bras for a Cause. Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority provided funding for marketing through their tourism uh, pro uh, promotion fund to attract people from outside Jacksonville to our area. Now, therefore, I, Sammy Phillips, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, do hereby uh, proudly proclaim the week of September 22nd, 2014 as Jacksonville, North Carolina Fashion Week in the city of Jacksonville. And I encourage everyone to support this event and its charitable causes by supporting the trunk show starting September 22nd with the trunk, with the trunk show and attending the launch red carpet and runway shows on September 25th, 26th, and 27th. I think we got all the dates covered, don't we? <laughs> and I, I really appreciate your efforts and, and what you're bringing to the community. And I will present you with this proclamation at this time. Thank you very much. It's good to see you. And I'm, I'm sure you have plenty to speak about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, first of all, we want to thank our mayor uh, for just, you know, embracing this tremendous event. It's an inaugural event. I want to thank um, 
uh, the co-founders, uh, Mr. Toya Scott, who's the visionary to bring this thing here, uh, uh, Fashion Week here, and she connected with my wife, who is my partner in everything that I do, and she kind of let me go forth and run forth and do things, but she is also the lead hairstylist for Jacksonville Fashion Week, and so I want to thank the greatest team anybody could ever work with, and that's the Jacksonville Fashion Week team. I want to uh, show so much love for them, um, especially our own local supermodel who is on our billboard, Miss Maya Eden. She's on our... <laughs> She is born and raised right here and has traveled uh, the world and, and internationally, and she is our local supermodel. I want to thank, and I'm going to give it to Mr. Toya, I want to thank the Jacksonville Tourism Authority and the Oslo County Tourism who have partnered, joined hands with us to bring this here. And I'm going to hold on to this probably until the rest of my life, putting heads in the beds. That's, that's all I say at every meeting. We got to put heads in the beds. And so we uh, have done that and we appreciate it. And you all would appreciate it along with our local charity partner, Bras for a Cause, because cancer has been really big in my family down to my little 13 year old daughter. And so that is something that we will hold uh, real close to us and, and still to show them that you can be fashionable no matter what you're going through. So we do have an event that we're going to do makeup, free makeup and free hair. Those who have hair or something to make sure that they always feel beautiful in spite of what they are dealing with on a day to day basis. We have a few special guests that we want to thank that's going to bring more people here, uh, Mayor, to our city. Bianca Golden, who is from America Next Top Model, is coming to our city. Uh, Shelly King, Miss Full Figure USA Plus, is coming to our city. Larry Dunn, some of the old school would know him. He's the keyboard player for Earth, Wind, and Fire. He is coming to our city. Kevin and Carrie from Philadelphia Fashion Week. And from Wilmington, who has partnered with us Fashion Week, TJ and Kalia. So these are the people that I want to thank, and I will let Miss Latoya uh, finish with that. She doesn't talk much. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Let me lift this up a little bit. <laughs> um, I just, um, I just like to thank everyone and I, um, on the team. I could have, I never could have done any of this without everyone here on the team. I remember coming here, uh, I think a year ago, and uh, presenting Fashion Week uh, at one of these meetings, actually, and it was just me and Shamika here on the side, and then now it's a bunch of people, and we have so much, so much accomplished now, and I'm just very proud of that, and I do. Uh, want everyone to come out and uh, support Jacksonville NC Fashion Week um, because this is going to be something extremely big and it's going to be bigger than Wilmington. <laughs> um, I would like to thank um, a few of our sponsors that we have um, already. Um, Bob King, Mercedes Benz, who is coming from Wilmington. Um, they will. They are one of our uh, lead sponsors. They are bringing a few Mercedes Benz, actually, uh, a few cars for the show that they will be presenting. Um, have uh, on the sides of the entrance. Um, we have Jacksonville Hampton Inn and Suites as one as our lead hotel sponsor. Millermont College. Um, they will. They are supplying us with uh, a few of their cosmetology students. And then we have um, my company, Final Touch Models. I'm supplying a few of my international models who are coming from Mulan, Paris, California, Philadelphia, and New York. Um, phase two beauty, uh, beauty supply and salon, they, um, that is our lead stylist. And Dow, Dow Studio, that is our, uh, our lead, our lead uh, photographers who um, are here locally. Um, Natural Beauty, uh, so, uh, Natural Beauty uh, Hair Care, um, she's a part of our team. Honey Bay Cam in Jacksonville, Singing Pe Preacher Productions, Suntan City, um, Faya Cosmetology and Artistry, which is our lead makeup artist coming from New York to help us out here. Um, Dream Vision Media, who has done our, our billboard designs. Inspire Model Agency, who we connected with in Charlotte, North Carolina. They are also uh, sending models here to help us with the show. Onslow Toms and the Delhi News has also showed us a lot of support um, for the Jacksonville NC Fashion Week. Not to mention, we actually have uh, one of the Delhi News work, uh, reporters who is going to be walking in the show. <laughs> um, 
I would like to also thank the designers and the, boutique, and the boutiques in this area, which a lot of people didn't realize that we, we do have boutiques here in Jacksonville. Um, Strutt Boutique, Victoria Beth Boutique, um, Johnson Menswear, Leanne Curtis Children's Line, uh, Leasia Davis Boutique, Nicholas Pavinsky, he's actually one of our celebrity designers from Project Runway who will be coming out here showcasing. He was very excited to come out here. Um, celebrity designers, Joel Shannon and Lisa Watson and Samina McGall. And um, I just like you guys, I just want to encourage you guys to buy the tickets to come out to the show because we are definitely showing, so, um, we are definitely giving opportunities for those who would never thought that they can be a part of something like this um, in Jacksonville. And I'm just very proud of what it, what it has become. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming, and I really appreciate the initiative that y'all are taking up here and uh, bringing this to our community. And uh, did you want to say anything? Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. All right. Got a warm mic here. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, and it's good to see all of you. Next, I have a proclamation recognizing Fire Prevention Week. I would like to ask uh, Deputy Chief uh, Spencer Lee from the Fire Department if he would join me up front. <clears throat> as long as I can remember, we've observed October 5th through the 11th as Fire Prevention Week. Uh, during this time, the Jacksonville Fire Department works hard to motivate Jacksonville's residents to keep, uh, keep themselves, their families, and their communities safe from fire. The City of Jacksonville would like to recognize the outstanding efforts of our fire and emergency services personnel with a proclamation naming October 5th through the 11th as Fire Prevention Week in the City of Jacksonville. Therefore, whereas the City of Jacksonville is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting our city, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire, and whereas fires killed more than 3,240 people in the United States in 2013, and the fire departments in the United States responded to more than 1,240,000 fires. And whereas Jacksonville fire personnel are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas Jacksonville residents are responsive to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. And whereas the 2014 Fire Prevention Week theme Working smoke alarms save lives, effectively serves to remind us all of the simple action we can take to keep our homes and families safe from fire during Fire Prevention Week and throughout the year. Now, therefore, I, Sammy Phillips, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim October 5th through the 11th, 2014, as Fire Prevention Week in the city of Jacksonville and throughout the city, and I urge all the people of Jacksonville to protect their homes and families by heeding the important safety messages of Fire Prevention Week 2014 and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of the Jacksonville Fire Department. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Mayor and City Council for supporting us and being able to do this. And I also like to thank uh, the firefighters that work for our organization that go out and do this 365 days a year, not just on the week of Fire Prevention Week. Fire prevention is very important. We stand true, stand fast behind that. And of course, as the mayor had mentioned, uh, the theme this year being working smoke alarms saves lives, that is a fact. And we know that to be statistically true throughout the United States. We support that, and we encourage each and every one of you to think about that when you go home tonight to test your smoke detectors.
until I became dressed as a In the back. Hey, Mayor, we do need you in this group. I know a police officer surrounded by this many firefighters make sure. Can I stand up here and Any way of getting that in the picture? You don't belong in the back. Yeah, you know that's not working. No. No. Okay, well done. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Jerry, you look mighty handsome now. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, Spence. Good to see you, too. Well done. All right, I have the first section, session of public comment. It'll be the next on the uh, agenda for tonight. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, I'm gonna, I know a lot of you have come solely for the purposes of the presentations. <coughs> and uh, I'm gonna take a, a, just a brief little pause here and allow some of you to leave. Trust me, you're welcome to stay <coughs> as long as you want to stay. I don't know why you'd want to stay, but uh, if you do, that's fine. But uh, anyway, i give you a chance to, to Move out. They want to stay. But if you want to stay, please stay. We shall proceed. Uh, the first session of public comment, I have one person that has signed up on the sheet. It would be Mr. Thomas Brock. Thomas. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Uh, it's been a while since I've up, been up here, so I've forgotten how it works a little bit. My name is Thomas Brock. I live at 213 Glen Cannon Drive in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And I'm here to talk about the Lejeune Greenway. Um, and, and I have just a few uh, key 
points, there seems to be some confusion about the Lejeune Greenway and its genesis. Um, there's been a letter or uh, uh, an article in today's newspaper that uh, supports public hearings um, for the Lejeune Greenway that goes through the Lejeune Memorial Gardens. And there have been public meetings. There have been numerous public meetings. I know because I held the public meetings um, when I was chairman of the Trails and Greenways Commission, leading up to the Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan, leading up to the Recreation and Parks Master Plan. There have been several public meetings where the community was invited to come out and talk about the path and all the other recreation and parks activities in the city. Um, there were no concerns brought up then. That's all I have to say about that. The current path respects all the memorials within the Lejeune Memorial Gardens. It follows an existing sidewalk within the, within the gardens, and it follows a power line easement in which there will be no construction for future memorials. There will be no alterations of existing memorials either. The current route includes a pedestrian crossing from the Coastal Carolina State Veterans Cemetery, which Camp Lejeune has requested, visitors have requested, uh, members at the cemetery have requested a safe crossing from the Memorial Gardens to the State Cemetery. The current route has been approved by all the existing memorial stakeholders when we began this process. Um, an important part of that is the Beirut Veterans of America Association firmly approve of the path as it's currently planned. And in fact, in their latest newsletter um, in August, they submitted a letter to Congressman Jones saying such and that they oppose his opposition to the path as it is planned. I only have one thing to say about an alternative route that was suggested. And that is this route will include an elevated path and construction of a bridge that will go directly in front of the Beirut Memorial Wall between Lejeune Boulevard and the memorial. And it will block the view of the memorial from the highway. And I don't think anyone wants that. Um, the Lejeune Greenway in total, which will stretch from the Memorial Gardens to the existing Rail to Trail Greenway, and I see I'm out of time. So I will sit down. Thank you, Mr. Brock. It's always a pleasure to see you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. So we're going to go on to agenda item. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have adoption of consent items. And I've, at this time, I'd entertain a motion to adopt the consent items. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? If you're none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Now we're going to move on to uh, a public hearing on a matter here. It's uh, just a second. It's uh, for CDW Holdings LLC, Don Williams. It's two tracks. Uh, I think it's for an annexation, voluntary annexation. Uh, for those two lots and Mr. Massey you're going to present that item. Mayor and Council this voluntary annexation petition was received from John Pearson Associates on behalf of CDW Holdings LLC for two tracks totaling 1.02 acres that are contiguous to the current city limit boundaries. The tracks are located at the corner of Marine Boulevard and Sunset Road and are a portion of a business group owned by CDW Holdings, which include the adjacent Moore Buick GMC site. The two sites are developed as a business office and GMC truck parking slash display area. <clears throat> the financial impact, the, an the additional revenues from uh, gained from property taxes by annexing uh, these two uh, lots would include $4,461 per year of property tax and stormwater fees of $960 per year. Staff recommends the council adopt the annexation ordinance as presented. Council, any questions of Mr. Massey on this item? 
This time I'm going to recess the regular council meeting and open a public hearing that's required in this matter. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak to this item? Present? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing, reconvene the regular city council meeting. Council, you're being asked to approve the voluntary annexation uh, petition. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt the, uh, the voluntary annexation ordinance as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, brings us to agenda item number 10. This is uh, for the uh, North Carolina League of Municipalities uh, all voting, uh, designating a voting and alternative uh, alternate voting desi designees for the 2014 North Carolina <coughs> League of Municipalities annual business meeting. Uh, the following members of council are currently registered to attend the annual conference. Myself, Mayor Pro Tem Lazar, Council Member Jerome Willingham. Do I have a nomination for a voting member? I'd like to nominate the mayor as our voting delegate and the mayor pro tem as the alternate. Second. I have a motion and a second. Was there any other uh, nominees? Okay. So motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Here move, the, move the nominations be closed Thank and the you. candidates elected by acclamation. So we're good with that, right? Second. second. Mm -hmm. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that brings us to our last section of public comment for the evening, and I do have Mr. Abe Rosen signed up to speak. My name's Abe Rosen. I live at 2133 Colony Plaza here in Jacksonville. I'm also the chairman of the Beirut Memorial Advisory Committee. Unfortunately, I can't get through what I have <laughs> in three minutes. So I'm just going to be brief, say a few words, just to let people know that the Beirut Memorial Commission later become a board or a, or a committee takes very serious the Beirut Memorial, the veterans, the families, the survivors, and the wall, and would never, ever allow anything to cause problems for any of those people. I honestly believe the more people we have go through the Memorial Gardens will make the awareness of the Beirut Memorial, as well as the Vietnam Memorial, a little easier for us to keep our promise to never forget. Now keep in mind most of the people on the Beirut Memorial Advisory Committee have a vested interest in that memorial and, and the site. A few of us have spent three decades living with and looking after the memorial. We have a promise to keep of never forget and we would not condone any attempt to tarnish the memory of the family members, the survivors, or the beautiful wall that we hold so dear. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we'll go to our reports. And I will start with Mr. Willingham. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Uh, since 1941, our city has been known as the home of Camp Lejeune, and we take great um, pride in that. Um, recently, we have received national recognition for our housing initiative. Uh, the recognition that we have received from the State Wildlife Federation for our conservation uh, efforts. All of these things are, are, are great recognitions that I really take pride in. The um, 
we've received, um, as I mentioned, national recognition for our housing initiative. On October the 15th, we'll be recognized statewide for the housing initiative. And um, I'll be there in Raleigh along with some of the um, staff and members of um, the Community Development Advisory Board to, to receive that award, uh, at, uh, award on behalf of the city, and I take great pride in that. Um, I'd also like to mention that um, I really appreciate the work of the Beirut Memorial Committee, and um, we have several veterans sitting on city council, and, and we take um, pride in those, um, all of our memorials. I brag about the memorials that we have here and suggest them as a tourist destination all of the time. So I, I think that um, between all of our volunteers that have put in years of effort into creation and preserving, I think that um, the plans for our, um, the future memorials and the, the bike trail are in good hands. Um, I'd also like to thank um, the um, chamber and um, the city council for supporting the recognition of Tyrone uh, Willingham uh, on the African American Heritage Trail. Uh, on behalf of him, I would uh, special thanks to uh, the mayor and uh, especially uh, his classmates. Um, the words from Mr. Warden and Mr. Um, Thomas um, really meant a lot at that um, recognition ceremony, as well as uh, Glenn Hargett. So um, thank you all for that. And um, uh, Tyrone appreciates this, com this community so much that he, he's even building a house across from our city manager's house in the park. So. Um, Thank you all. Nothing further. Mr. Bittner. Well, you can't help but think about with all the awards we received, the recognition, national recognition, housing, conservation, the work that the Beirut Committee has done, the Memorial Gardens. We live in a great community. I'm sure glad to be here, and I hope you are too. That's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Warden. Uh, speaking of uh, memorials, just recently we we uh, attended the countywide celebration of, of Patriots Day at the Memorial Gardens at the uh, the 9/11 Memorial, the piece of, of steel that was in the World Trade Center, and and again it made me grateful to to live in a community that promises not to forget, who recognizes heroes, who are appreciative of of the sacrifice that uh, first responders as well as our military makes to uh, to help keep us safe and and we're very appreciative of that so again I'm glad to be living in this community also Jerry and, and Jerome that's all thank you Mr. Thomas thank you mayor I, I'm glad to be living here too I appreciate all of the hard work everybody does and wanted to mention that one of our uh, natural resources, the beautiful weather, I hope, that's coming for this weekend in the River Palooza, <laughs> that everyone can come out on Friday night starting at 5. Uh, it's going to be all day Saturday. It should be a really wonderful event. It's, uh, I can't remember what year this is for it, but it's, it's going strong. It'll, it should be a real nice weekend for it. Hope to see a lot of you out there. What night is Nat Tuckett scheduled? Uh, Saturday at 6. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, the City of Jacksonville Environmental Appearance Advisory Committee invites you to nominate someone from your neighborhood or your own decorative home for our first Halloween, or excuse me, our first holiday home decorating contest. The 2014 Holiday Home Decorating Contest is a great way to show off your community pride and to light up this special season. It is also a perfect family project for the entire family and community to enjoy. This contest will encompass our three upcoming holidays, Halloween, October 1st through the 31st, Thanksgiving, November 1st through the 30th, and Christmas, December 1st through the 31st, with an award being given for the most festive and creative home for each period. All entries will be judged on the basis of 
themes, design, creativity, and participations. Entries will be featured on the City of Jacksonville Facebook page and voting will be open to the public with the final decision being made by the Jacksonville Environmental Appearance Advisory Committee. So please go to the Jacksonville website or call City Hall for more additional information. Thank you. Dr. Woodruff. Mayor, members of council, uh, usually I make my report from the seat and I would like to make some reports and then we'd like to show you some additional items. First of all, this coming Friday, which is September the 19th at 6.30 p.m., we would invite the public to the Vietnam Memorial in the Memorial Gardens where the POW MIA Recognition Day ceremony will occur. Again, that is this coming Friday at 6.30 p.m. As Mr. Thomas said, this coming weekend we also have the Riverwalk Festival. We encourage folks to come to downtown. There's a lot of good music, a lot of good food. There is a rumor that Mr. Thomas will be the lead center, singer with, with, I didn't say center, did I? I meant singer <laughs> with <laughs> Nantucket. Yeah. Apologize, sir. But if you want to hear uh, Mr. Uh, Thomas's uh, melodious voice, come out and hear Nantucket. That's uh, Friday night and Saturday. The public safety building is nearing completion. Every day we think we get one day closer. We're just not sure what we're getting closer to. But what we are inviting the public is that on October the 7th, instead of having a workshop and city council meeting, we will have an open house and dedication for the Center for Public Safety. There will be tours. We encourage the folks to come out and see how the Center for Public Safety is taking its place as part of the rebirth of the downtown area. So please plan to attend. That will begin generally at five o'clock. More details are coming. That will be Tuesday, October the 7th. And again, there will be no city council workshop or meeting that evening. The Jacksonville City Acad Citizens Academy is still accepting applications. We only have a few more weeks in which we have people uh, can enroll. So we encourage you, if you want to learn the back side, the, the behind the scenes role of how city government actually works, if you want to have the opportunity to sit in a garbage packer, see how mechanics repair police cars, see how the 911 dispatch works, we encourage you to sign up for that academy. We have a, a short video we'd like to show you relative to work that your city staff did on a habitat project down on Kerr Street where a building was torn down nearly four years ago. The site that is presented in this video was a home that stood vacant for more than 15 years boarded up. Under the leadership and direction of the mayor and council, we have now taken down over 30 dilapidated homes in the downtown and overall Jacksonville area. What you're going to see now is part of the rebirth, and this is the city employees digging the footers, literally digging the footers for this Habitat house. Glenn, please. This is the City of Jacksonville's Leadership Development Team, and we are out here today volunteering for Habitat for Humanity on their build at 302 Spargo Street. The connection to the city is we purchased this property approximately a year ago, and we donated it to Habitat for Humanity so that they could build an affordable home in this area. Um, the city has been interested in working in the downtown area for several years, and this is another opportunity to collaborate on affordable housing in the downtown. The Leadership Development Program is an initiative that the city started to help the new um, leaders in the city develop and become the leaders of the future. This fits into the community development long-range plan because affordable housing is one of the, the primary things that we are doing. Over the next five years, we plan to build um, affordable housing for our first-time home buyers. And we have worked with Habitat in the past on another project that they did here in the city. So when they came downtown, it was a, a natural fit for community development to get involved and I saw the opportunity to also invite our leadership program to participate. This feels great. Um, it's one thing to sit in the office and do the paperwork. It's another thing to actually get out and contribute and be a part of it. And I'm actually so proud. I know when I drive down the street in the future after the home is built, I'll be able to say City of Jacksonville played a small part in that and that makes me proud. And for the record, the women did outdig the men. 
The footers were 24 inches wide by 18 inches deep, and I can tell you that that soil was very, very hard. So, second thing we would like to do this evening is take just a moment, as several speakers have addressed the issue of the Beirut Memorial and the trail. It's something that has been with this community for many years, and that is the goal of building the Lejeune Trail. The history you lived, I certainly did not. It goes back into the 1980s, and it began after the railroad tracks were removed. There was strong support to build a connection between the base and to convert the downtown railroad trail into something that people could jog on, walk on, bicycle on. The first trails were built when the tracks had been taken out. Please. Many of you know the history of the bridge that goes over 24. And it's been interesting in the four years that I've been privileged to be here, how many times people have asked me, when are you going to paint that bridge? Well, the reality is it's not supposed to ever be painted. It was designed this way with the rust patina look, and it is a tremendous asset. The way it's an asset, though, is it connects the civilian <coughs> side of the community and the military side by giving them a safe passage. You can see here families, whether they're walking, whether they're riding a scooter, or whether they're riding a bicycle, this is a facility that's used daily, please. The particular project that is currently under discussion in the papers, and even at the national level through Representative Jones, actually goes back to 2007, when the funding was begun and the design was also funded, please. The design process, engineering firms were engaged, special engagement to help the Lejeune Memorial Gardens area, the city sought outside stakeholders. As one person testified today, there were public hearings. Now, not everyone who's here today who has an opinion, pro or con, regarding the trail attended those public hearings. Whether you lived here or whether you've moved here, we just want to confirm there were public input sessions. We took a lot of public input and the representatives of all the memorials were invited, please. Many different ideas occurred, strong objections to running anything between Beirut Memorial and Lejeune Boulevard. As was mentioned earlier, you may not realize that the land between the Highway 24 Lejeune Memorial uh, Boulevard and the Beirut Memorial is not level ground. There is a floodplain there. In order to build anything in that floodplain, you're going to have to elevate it. And one of the problems with elevating it is what? It blocks the vision, it blocks the view of the back of the memorial. Now this was the first memorial that we built in this community. Many of you contributed personal dollars to that. And since that memorial was built, no entity, absolutely no entity, has contributed more money to the Memorial Grove and the memorials that have been built there than this city council. You have contributed over $2 million to help bring into reality those memorials. Why anyone would think that you, as the leaders of this community who have invested $2 million in that, would do something that would desecrate that investment baffles me. Please. This is a graphic that shows at the top Highway 24. On the left-hand side, of course, is the entry to Camp Johnson. You will notice in the area, and Glenn, you're gonna draw for me, if you will draw where the Beirut Memorial is. You'll also draw, please, where the 9-11 Memorial is, where the Vietnam Memorial is, where the soon-to-be-erected Monfort Point Marines and the uh, Museum of the Marines are going to be. What's important about this is there's a master plan for the entire garden. And the boundaries for each of the memorials are set. And by purpose, the boundaries don't run into each other. You will notice the spacing between the Vietnam and the soon to be erected Monfort Point. You'll notice the spacing between the Beirut and the 9-11. That's intentional. Where the route is proposed for the path actually runs under a power line. Nothing else can be built in that power line. It is not an invasion on any of the memorials. 
please. <coughs> Next graphic, please. This is a close-up. It's a little difficult to see, but you will notice where the Beirut Memorial is located. And if you notice the circles that are in this area, that's the limit of the Beirut Memorial. Anyone who has been misled by whatever information they have gotten, we're sorry that you don't have what I believe are accurate facts. What you will see is that there is a limit to the Beirut Memorial. And this trail in no way desecrates or impinges upon or infringes upon the area that's been set aside for the Beirut Memorial. Please. One of the things that, that I have to admit really amazes me is how anyone at the federal level, state level, or local level are concerned about bicyclists coming to the Memorial Garden. Now, as many of you know, I ride my bicycle to work at least one day a week and some day five days a week if it's not raining. When it is raining, I ride a little faster. But the thing that amazes me is how anyone in Washington can say that we should not have bicycles in our memorials when in fact, look at what happens in Washington. Here's a young man who rode his bicycle to which memorial? You recognize what that is? World War II, World War II Memorial. II. Next, please. Which memorial is this? Vietnam. Vietnam. Next, please. Which is this? Which is, next, please. I mean, the list goes on. Please. Please. This is the latest memorial, and it is which, Mr. Willingham? Martin Luther King. Yeah, Martin Luther King. Bicycles are such a part of the Washington Mall that you can actually rent a bicycle on the mall so that you can ride and see all of the memorials. How people think that bicyclists are gonna desecrate any mall or any monument anywhere is just something that I have difficulty understanding. Our pledge as the city of Jacksonville is very clear. It's clear to the families of the Beirut victims it is clear to the families of every person on the Vietnam Wall. It is clear to every person who has ever worn the uniform to protect freedom. And that is that this city stands for the integrity and the protection and the long-term maintenance and the memory of the people who sacrificed in those days. I pledge to you as the city manager that when this bicycle path is installed, it will be installed with all reverence to ensure that no memorial is in any way desecrated and that the police department will do all within their power to ensure that any person, whether walking or riding a bicycle who enters that park, stays proper in their behavior and respects the dignity of these facilities. Thank you. Pardon? So this time I'm going to recess the. Uh, adjourn the council meeting. Can I speak? All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Right. Now we're going to resume business. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.